not yet. Cordy. Okay, got it. Okay, so can we just go around, let everybody know your first name, how many years of business or months, and how many listings have you had? Approximate. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm Yvonne. I've been in the business for uh, 14 years, and I'm going to guess um, 30 listings. I'm Elsie. I have uh, um, um, I've been in real estate since uh, October 20th of last year, 2020, and I haven't done any uh, listings any yet. Not yet. Okay. Josh? Yeah, I'm uh, Josh Starbuck out of the Santa Cruz office. <clears throat> and uh, we just actually moved here from uh, Montana. And uh, that's where the bulk of our business has been, especially on the listing side. And so probably 10 listings, maybe. Wonderful. And how long in the real estate? Uh, well, in total, four years, but the last two were... Oh, four. Good. Yeah, pretty disruptive. So... Yeah. It was a little hit or miss, but yeah. Well, you know what? Congratulations. So you have a real estate license in two states. Um, actually, I had in three, two wow. states in one country. Um, I was also licensed in Canada, where I'm from. Wow. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Anna? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, well, I'm Anna, and I got my license in October 22nd. Didn't start actually doing anything with it until December uh, and didn't have any listings yet. Not yet. You're early. It's still early. Okay, Art? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Art Moria. I have been into business a year and a half, approximately and no listings yet. Okay, Kim? It's okay if you're busy. Hi, as, oh. no, sorry, I was moving something. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, I've been in business about five years and probably 10 -ish or so listings. Wonderful. Let's see, oh, I don't have a name on this one. How about Patty? Uh, she was in the chat, her mic's not working or something. So she had uh, 21 months, one listing. Oh, thank you, Josh. Help me out, you guys, on the, um, if somebody could take that upon uh, and help us out today as a group, uh, if there's any questions in the chat. And this is very interactive, everybody. Please feel free to um, just speak up. Okay, I, I see Alex. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Alex Vasquez. I'm out of the San Jose uh, office. I've been in business about five months, but I haven't got any listings yet. Okay, and that's why we're all here. And then I see a KE. Is that Kelly? Um, all I see is K initials KE. Okay, they might not be able to to, to say anything yet. And then I see a gentleman with a white shirt and gray jacket there. I don't see a name. What we're doing is just saying our first name, how long you've been in real estate and how many listings you've had. Okay, let's see, I see Donna. Hello. Hey, how are you oh. doing? Good, welcome Donna. <laughs> Let me see, I'm on my fifth year. Okay, how many listings approximately? Oh, shit. Um, I, <laughs> Approximate. In all five years? Yeah. I couldn't even guess. Okay, like maybe 15, 20? Let's say 20. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're guessing. All right. And there was a gentleman starting to say something. Who yeah. is it? My name's Dennis. I've been an agent since October 2020, and I have zero listings. Hi, Dennis. Hello. We met on the last class, I think. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Okay. I don't see some names. I just see some photos. of. Uh, so can whoever we missed, can you please let us know your first name, how long you've been in the business, and how many listings you've had? 
Hi, this is Valerie Harder. Sorry, I'm just uh, multitasking right now. I'll turn on the video in a minute. But oh, it's this okay. Is, Thank you, Valerie. I just joined Keller Williams in the last two weeks from Compass, which was formerly a Lampinel. And um, I've been in business altogether um, 16, about 16 years. Uh -huh. And again, I would have to estimate, I'm going to say probably 70, 80. Wow, we got a pro among us. Great. <laughs> Valerie, we're going to ask you a ton of questions. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, not a 10, a, a few. I'll okay. try to answer. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Which office are you? Um, Silicon Valley. I'm actually in the Campbell office with um, Campbell. Rob Ross. Wonderful. Yeah, and and we this class is actually open to everybody, um, anybody. Please know that you can always invite any of um, agents outside of our office to join. It's a good way to not to join, to come to classes. It's a good way to to work on your profit sharing. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, who else? I don't see names. I only see um, faces on some of these. Okay, well, um, let's get started. I'd like to welcome everybody. Okay, so where did this come from? What do you guys see? You gotta have to bear with me. My action plan? Yeah, why did that pop up? Um, what happened to the PowerPoint? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, can you see it now? Yep. The PowerPoint, okay, great. All righty, as I mentioned, while we still had people coming in, this course is the listing specialist. Now, while I was preparing for, for today, it does talk about a, a team aspect. Now, I think majority of us are solo agents, might have a one or two people working alongside us. But so just keep in mind, even though it says listing specialist, and, oh bless you, and some parts will, are gonna talk about um, accountability to your, to your manager type person, your, your team leader, which is, um, would be the leader of the team not like Laura or Rob or Elaine. So just keep that in mind. And we're gonna have to just um, put it into the perspective of all of us are solo agents for the most part, I, I, I believe. Okay, so um, there's eight classes. And when you are able to, and please, if anybody was not able to get their manual today, just email me. My email is really easy. It's just Yvonne at kw.com. Y-V-O-N-N-E at kw.com. If somebody can put that in the chat for me, I'd super appreciate it. I think, you know what, next time when I have a, a helping with a class, I've got to have somebody to help because it's, um, it's a bit challenging to, for, especially for me, <laughs> to, to manage uh, the the PowerPoint and some of the material and going back and forth. Okay, so um, tomorrow Donna's going to move on to prospecting. The other chapter is preparing for an appointment. So I just want you, I'm only going through this so you know we're not gonna cover all this today. Uh, today is, a, is the overview. Um, next week is gonna be preparing for ob object, objections, which is a very big part delivering the listing consultation. And then the third week is gonna be consulting the seller, receiving and presenting offers and putting it all together. All right, so keep in mind today is our overview and we don't need ground rules because we're not in person. I, I do wanna point out this was created. Can you guys see everything okay, size wise? Yes. Okay, this was created back in 2004. Okay, so some of this might not quite be up to date um, for us in our area, but we're going to accommodate those um, time, time differences. Okay, so why are we here? We're here because we wanna get stronger with our listing, our listing uh, business. That's why I'm here. Everybody knows about the Army MREA book, the Red Book. Um, if, if there's only one book that we read, it should be that one. 
So I do encourage all of you to get back in the, uh, the red book. And um, it's like our, it's like our, it's like our Bible. All right. So um, these are the eight classes that we just talked about, the eight chapters. Uh, today, we're going to focus on what's the role of, of a listing agent. I'm going to say agent, okay, because specialists kind of represents that it's on a team. So we're not just going to focus because is anybody in our group have a team? My wife and I are a team and I'm supposed to be the listing specialist. Okay. Anybody else is on a, more of a team concept? Okay, so I think majority of us, and I believe in all the offices, are mainly solo agents. And I like the way that Gary and, and Jay defined it last week on family in family reunion. So there's solo and solo with admin, and I believe most of us are in that realm. Okay, so again, just talking about this, the eight chapters, what you will learn. Uh, we're going to be participating, we're going to do a little role playing, not a, not a lot, because we're not all together. This is meant, this curriculum was meant to be in a classroom type setting. Okay, so chapter one, and for those of the of you that just joined a little um, after we got started, in the chat section, you can find the material, the manual, and then there's some additional pages. Okay, so what I'd like to start with is, let me get to my chapter one. We're gonna start at chapter one. So what is the role of being a listing agent? Well, um, we need to figure out, okay, what is our job description? So we're gonna cover that. Then we're gonna identify our, and set our goals, our key goals. This is the word that's um, the key is that there's many goals that we're gonna have as a, in our business, but what is the, what are the key goals? And we'll talk about that. Uh, the 411, I think we all pretty much know what that means. If you've been in KW for any amount of time, that's our, um, our, our form to set our goals and in a timely manner. And then experience uh, and being accountable. Okay, so our job description. Can everybody see that okay still? Yes. Okay. Give you a moment just to read that. So um, starting off with, with our goal of um, preparing for our listing, it starts by always our mindset. So when, wherever we might get the opportunity to meet with a seller, with owners and the, um, looking to sell their home, then these are the things that we need to be prepared, a relationship for uh, the, what is the key relationship for all sellers? Well, that's a that's a challenging one. Uh, Valerie, you know, you had seventy to eighty. Donna, you've had twenty plus. I've had twenty plus. Every seller is different. Every seller is different. So we do need to be prepared. We have to have um, all our paperwork, all our things in order, and um, we through these eight course classes, you're gonna see what all that entails. Um, obtaining appointments. So how do we get appointments? Well, we get appointments by our lead generating, by our referrals, by our uh, digging into our database and calling all our past clients, keeping in touch, doing ads on our Facebook, our social media, 
So one of our key roles is definitely setting appointments. Then our also one of our job description is working on our knowledge. And you know what I found, uh, what I have found, and let me know if anybody, um, please add in at any time. What I have found that is our clients don't expect us to know everything, but they do expect us to be knowledgeable. Like if we just give a little overview of the market, and that's a super big and uh, important aspect for me that I believe that we should at least give a very uh, basic and precise um, snapshot of the market, whether we're talking to buyers or sellers or potential investors. So that's, um, that's a very important part. So going on, number four, provide high level fiduciary advice. That is extremely important. What another way of saying that is our customer service and to not only give a good customer service, but, but to give over and beyond what they expect. And those are done by all the little things that we do on top of the standard. They're standard things that we have to do, but how can, um, how do we give over, um, uh, what's that term that that's um, uh, oh, let's see I wrote that down uh, oh uh, meet, meets and exceeds our clients expectations you know over deliver so number five works directly with the listing manager okay so uh, that's what I was talking about we don't really have that concept unless you are a team so a job just that might be in or out you that's going to be um, possibly or, or you might not have somebody to answer to consults with clients of course um, number seven we elevate showing evaluate showings feedback and pricing so in other words that's communicating the client would be our sellers and then the last is negotiation, being effective with our negotiating. Now we negotiate also with our clients, right? Not just, not just the buyers that are gonna be coming, um, the sellers, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the agents that are representing the buyers, we're gonna be negotiating with them. So that is our description. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions or insight? I have a question actually. Uh, when you have a lead uh, from somewhere, but you don't have all the information, uh, yeah. we normally contact uh, you know, a title company maybe to find out a, a little bit more about the uh, property, about uh, the owner and all of that. But if in that list, you don't find uh, any communicating um, information, meaning no, no email, no phone number, there is only an address. Uh, do you reach out by sending a, a letter to, to recruit or, or do you have another way to get an email address or a, a phone number for that um, lead? Okay, so you're, you're, your question is more on the prospecting, on you trying to find information about a particular right. owner. Mm -hmm. Can anybody um, help her out with that? Any, anybody have any experience with that? If trying to find um, now, Elsie, my question to you is, are you trying to call this person? Because obviously, if you know the address, that's a simple, uh, you can send a letter or note card. Yeah, I know the address, uh, you know, but I would like, uh, I, I think uh, it's a lot more powerful to have a, um, a real personalized uh, connection in a way. So I think, um, you know, the strength in, in connecting with people is just uh, hearing their voice, the tone of uh, speak, uh, you know, the, it, more, more, I think it's more sustainable than just a letter. Is okay. there a way to find uh, an email address or a phone number now that we don't have yellow pages, we don't have anything that connects the address to, uh, to, to a phone number, to, con to connection, you know, other than regular mail. Is there a way 
or isn't there a way? Okay, got it. So you want a, you want a phone number? Okay. Yes, there are ways. Um, I remember Donna. I don't know if you want to share if you can um, hear us, Donna. Yeah, I can hear you. So I just put it in the chat. There's two people search, which is a, a which is a free search, and you could either put in a person's name or an address, and it comes up with. Uh, with names that are associated and it has phone numbers and um, email addresses if they're available. You can also work with your title company. Sometimes they have services that they use that they can provide you with um, emails and phone numbers. There's a cost associated to that when you go to the title company, but it's usually um, not a huge cost. Mm -hmm. And then what's more expensive, but also provides you with um, information is Vulcan 7. What's that? That was about two, uh, Vulcan 7. But that's also an auto dialer. It has a lot of bells and whistles. Um, and that one's 300. It gives you leads with the full contact information with auto dialing. Have you used uh, Vulcan 7, Yvonne? No, I have not. Yeah, so the freeway, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have an address, would be the True People Search. Yeah. And then also, um, Elsie and everyone else, when we can get back to door knocking and reaching out to the, your farm, um, even if you just take a walk, you're going to meet people. You're going to see people. You, we don't have to go door knock. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm, um, I, I believe I'm going to start doing this. Is whichever, whatever your farm is, go take a walk. Take a, you know, um, kind of a, a slow stroll and, you know, be pleasant, smile, and, and maybe wear your name tag. You don't have to wear your name tag. Maybe wear a KW shirt. Uh, that has just KW and that's not really a name tag and um, just say, you know, I'm just going around and don't, we can't door knock though. But if you see, cause people are out, a lot of people are out walking. They're also doing yard work and we can communicate with people. Of course you're going to, we, we still have to wear masks for now. We still can communicate. So Elsie, that might be, it might be something you can try. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Donna. And hey, anybody, please, if you have any suggestions, that's what this workshop, these courses and classes are all about, because we all have different um, experiences. Okay. I have heard this rule so many times. 80-20 rule? Have you all heard about it? Yeah, they speak 80%. You, you speak 20% of the time. That's, that's, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Now I'm going to try my best to, again, you guys give me grace, please. Uh, I, I have a video. Can you see the video? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Turn up your volumes. I hope you guys can hear it. Uh, Josh, I can see you. I can only see a few people. Elsie, Anna, I see you. If you can hear it, can you give me a thumbs up? Um, this is only a two minute, I thought is a good, simple, um, overview of the 80-20 rule. Today I want to talk to you about something called the 80-20 rule. Maybe you've heard of this before. It's often referred to as Pareto's law. Um, the 80-20 rule basically says that 20% of your actions produce 80% of your results. And that's really telling, right? So what that says is the top 20% of the things we do give us 80% of our results. And so they've done this test and they've, they've looked at all different things and that's basically what, that's, what that means. And what I wanna to talk to you about is how that relates to real estate and life in general, I guess. Um, I'm often asked, how do I manage so many different things? And I've got my real estate investing business, my, my training company, got a big family, lots of responsibilities. How do I manage all of that? And what I do is I really try to focus on this 80-20 rule. So, Think about it. I want, to, I want you to do a self-evaluation. Ask yourself, what would your life look like? What would your real estate business look like if you focused your time and energy on the top 20% of your actions, the things you do that produce the most results? What would things look like? And I promise you things would look drastically different. Um, I like to ask myself constantly throughout the day, is this, whatever I'm doing, is this the best use of my time right now? And that really helps me focus on doing high priority tasks. And if you've got the 80-20 rule in mind, it'll really help you focus on, on doing those top priorities and looking for ways to drop 
you know, the bottom 80% of your actions, which only give you 20% of your results. So just a really quick tip here is uh, implement the 80-20 rule in your real estate business, in your life, whether it's making offers, whether it's managing your deals, whatever it is you're doing, working with cash buyers, look for the 80-20 principle in all you do and you'll really see your results skyrocket. That's it, Jerry Norton signing off. Okay, now let me get back to the PowerPoint. Oh my goodness, let's see. No. Hold on, please. Today I wanna to talk to you about something called the no. See if I do this. Oops. Okay, how do I get back to our PowerPoint? Oh, you know what? Is it back here? Everybody, Today everybody I want to talk to you about on getting back to the PowerPoint. Um, Let's see. No. Should be in relation to your screen share. Yeah, let's see. You are screen sharing. Um, like you, mm. If it's on a separate screen, if you click on the screen sharing, it'll bring up that window that shows all the different. Say that again, Josh, please. <clears throat> so at the top of your screen where, you, where it says you're, yeah. you're sharing your screen, if you click on that. New screen or, or you are sharing screen? Uh, I mean, you are screen sharing. Let's yeah, see. it says, you, you know, mine says you're viewing. It's, it should be a green bar. Yeah. And, and um, if you click on view option, or sorry, if you click on that, it should bring up another screen with a bunch of windows. And you, there you go. There you go. You guys can see it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. And all I see now is the chat. Hmm. Wow. This is not easy. Sorry, you guys, I'm not that great with. Um... So you guys can see the whole PowerPoint, but all, all I can see now is the chat. Um... Hmm. I think you can close the chat if you click on the just on the button again. Okay, and then I'm just trying to bring back my PowerPoint. I think it's underneath this. Um. So try this again. If you click on that screen sharing at the top, yeah, there should be a bunch of windows and you should see the PowerPoint in one of those windows. If you click on that window, it'll bring back the, the PowerPoint. Okay, what, what do you guys see right now? Well, I see the, the manual, you're scrolling through it. Okay, then you know what? I'm gonna stick with the manual. Okay, you guys can see the manual? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good, <laughs> same, same thing. Thank you for bearing with me. Let's get to that. Okay, so this was a huge part. Is this the first time any of you have heard this rule or have you all heard it before? It's my I'm first very, time. Very familiar with it. Okay, it's actually, uh, I've heard sorry, it before, but I didn't remember what it was, so. Oh, it's huge, Valerie. And Elsie, it's your first time. Josh, you've heard it. And for the majority of us, maybe we've heard it, but we're not quite clear. Um, I really did, preparing for today, um, I really did an extensive um, look at it. And it was even more than what I thought. So before I go into that, though, well, let me let you, uh, I'm going to give you a few of my um, uh, notes, and then we have an exercise. So what I really liked what that gentleman said, he said, what, whatever I'm doing right now, is this the best use of my time? I think that's a very basic question that we can ask ourselves. And even though we think, oh my gosh, this is so important. I've got to answer the text. I've got to answer this email. I have to look up that property. I got to start that auto notification because I told my client last night I was going to send it. And then, oh my gosh, I got to call the stager. 
Now, do you guys think that list of what I just said, is that in my 20% of, or is that in my 80%? Depending on what you're trying to do, but most likely you're 80%. Anybody agree or disagree with what Josh said? I would have thought it's the 20% because you are, um, you know, being a very uh, responsible person who wants to do what is uh, best for their client. So if you have a client and you promise to send them the info that they need and you need to, you know, stage their home or whatever it is that it takes to sell it, then you need to get going on it. Okay. That's if you have a client, but if you don't have a client, that's uh, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm thinking of staging, I'm sure I have a property to stage, right? Okay, okay. so that's a point of view. Who else? Who else? That list I just said, I had a couple more lists uh, on my list. Oh, I got to go work on my website. Oh, yes, I got to send that thank you card for that referral. And oh, yes, I just went to a class and they told me I'm supposed to send a note card to everybody I talk to. Who thinks that's the 80% or the 20% we as agents? Now, again, our focus today is on listings. Is what I just said, that eight or nine things, is that going to help me get my listing? Is that, is, is that the best use of my time? To no. try? You should never be focused on that one specific listing because you will be out of it in a month and you have nothing else. So you always need to put your priority of getting business first and do everything else in the less productive time, which is afternoon. So your morning hours usually mm -hmm. is your most productive hours should be focused on lead generating and prospecting. That's the 20% that will give you 80% of your business. Yep, mm -hmm. that is correct. A anybody else want to add to what Anna said? Yeah, Gary Keller said, never sacrifice future business for now business. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And also what I like to share with all of you as and all you have to do, all I, I mean, I took some time to prepare for today. And if you go and do a, just a little bit of research and the, uh, uh, the, um, the gentleman that the Italian um, person, let's see. Oh, um, Pareto. Pareto, thank you. Pareto, uh, this is his, what he concluded, let's just say. So now as, going into my other side so setting appointments reviewing um uh let's see no i don't think that one prospecting making my calls calling my database calling my past clients asking for referrals basically prospecting and lead generating that would be our 20 percent so the moral of the story is 20% of our actions will generate 80% of our results. Does anybody kind of disagree? No. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, not after all this, not after uh, KW puts this on uh, you know, our training. So we need to spend our time on what brings us results and gets us to our goals. So now we have to define what is that 20%. Now we already named a couple of things. If, um, if you can just jot down two or three things and we're only focusing now on the 20%. But before we do that, Elsie, I want you to uh, also let you know um, what you said is correct, but that's not what we focus on first. Mm -hmm. When we get up each day, uh, whatever we, we do in the morning to, um, generate ourselves whether it's taking a doing a little exercise doing some prayer time doing some reading whatever it might be um, and then we get get to work so the whole thing is all those other things that my list Elsie I've got to do today but mm -hmm. that's not my first priority our first priority is to focus on the 20 percent the task and the 20 percent Okay. When Gary Keller and Jay Pops on to take it even further with the one thing, if y'all haven't read that, you know, especially those who are newer agents, um, it, they take the 80-20 and they strip it down even further to the point where, and then when you pair that with the 411, 
that basically what there's what they say is there's one thing that you can do by doing such makes e everything else easier or unnecessary. And so, and you don't earn the right to do the next thing until your one thing is done. Right? And so it, it, it takes it and gets even more hyper-focused on that 20%. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Josh. So our focus today is, so how can we go get listings? So in my farm, there's zero uh, actives. There's no uh, properties on the market. And I think if we all went around and said, well, how many listings um, are, how many actives in our farm, which I hopefully you all know, or in our city, if, you're, if, if we're reaching out, uh, but we should know our numbers, but, but we're not gonna get into that. Now, how can I go reach out to that farm? Well, and we're not gonna talk about that today either, because you're gonna have that in the next, I think Donna, that's your category, right? Chapter two is prospecting. And, and she is tomorrow. Okay, so can you just, let's just take two minutes, jot down, because I really, this is a huge emphasis on this. I, I know it might be, okay, Yvonne, let's, let's get on with it, we got it. But this is a super important thing. Um, I'm so guilty of it, of, Knowing what the most important thing is, but then I see a text I, and all those things that I just said, and I do get distracted. Now, and what they say is that we're more productive early in the day. And so our energy should, we should get through our 20%. So whatever our goal is, and we're going to get to that, um, that 411 that just Josh mentioned. So let's just say our goal, and we're all going to have different goals. Let's say our goal is to call um, 20, make 20 contacts. Now that might take 50 calls, but let's just say uh, you have a goal of 20 contacts each day. So, and also I have a goal of setting two listing appointments a week. Okay, so what do I need to do? What actions do I need to do to hit my goals? So can just take a couple of minutes and write down uh, what is, and it, it could be things we've already talked about. What are the 20, what's the 20% actions that we should be doing as a listing agent? <laughs> That's good. You're thinking. Okay. If we can just go around and if somebody's already mentioned it, so maybe three or four people, um, if someone's mentioned it, then say something different. Cause I'm sure we're all gonna have pretty much, a, a lot of it's gonna be the same. So who'd like to start? What do you have on your list of what should we be doing for our 20%, which are the most important things that we should be doing if, we're, if our goal is to generate a listing? Anybody? Cool. Call past clients and sphere of influence and check in, check in calls and then ask for referrals, ask if they know anybody who's, you know, thinking of moving or, you know, in the, in the right way, of course, but just check in. Sure. And that's, that's great. And Valerie mentioned in the right way, of course, we're going to be calling. We want our conversations, our relationships. We want to be authentic. We want to be um, that we really care and, and um, be sincere, right? Yeah. So I'm not gonna just call Valerie and say, oh, hey, Valerie, oh gosh, I'm working on my business. There's no listings. Do you know anybody that wants to sell? 
no, I'm not going to start there, but it'll come in the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people usually say how's business. Yes. Okay. How's the market? Okay. So um, calling past clients and our sphere of influence and our database. What else can we be doing? Um, uh, what else is a, something we should be doing that will be in our 20% to help us reach our goal of getting listings? Finding new ways to, to get uh, prospects, new, new listings and prospects. Okay. Research and um, find new ways to lead generate. Yeah. Okay. Calling expired. Absolutely. Hey, one note on expired, everybody. Now, I'm not one. I haven't been doing this. I did a little bit here and there. But the expires that have been expired for some time, not just the recent ones. Mm -hmm. Those recent ones, they're getting calls like 10 or 12 or 20 a day. They're, um, that one's a tough one. But if you go back, if we would go back like 30 days or more expired, might have a little bit better luck. Okay, what else can we be doing the 20% of our time? I mean, not the maybe find a niche like what what really what kind of listings you want, so you can focus more uh, in detail what to look for. Good. Through which uh, community? Like I know some, uh, you know, they they focus on elderly who wants to downgrade. Some uh, focus on people who are coming from different states and they want to settle here. Uh, all kinds of different categories. You need to find the category that matches your lifestyle and you are most comfortable doing. Okay, so hone hone in on a specific um, group of of by uh, sellers owners. Okay, what else? Just one more. Some something that someone hasn't said yet. Anybody? get involved in your community, all different other activities that might lead you to know more people and get more info regarding people who want to sell. Yeah, but I in, would- in a, normal, in a normal life, not in a COVID life, of course, but you know, still. I, I would think, Elsie, that's a good one, but I would put that in the 80%. Mm. Um, because that's gonna take time. Yeah. Yeah. So mainly our main things are, and then you, we're going to go through this through the, through the eight courses, the next seven is going to be lead generating. It really boils down to that, uh, making our calls. Um, and Art's heard this so many times, he's probably tired of hearing me say this, but our number one job, what is it, Art? What one one? Lead okay. generation. I can't hear you, Art. Oh, you're muted. It's okay. Sorry, uh, guys. I was okay. uh, multitasking at that time. Uh, our number one job, I think it's it's lead generation. I mean, right. we contact 20 people, 15, 20 people a day, uh, you know, trying to... It's all about relationship. I think how we communicate with them and we guide them in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, the, the prime objective is to, to you know, find the, a, a comfortable guidance for them. And of course it has to be in the right direction and uh, observe and look, seek what, how could we help them? That's the prime focus. That's all correct. Um, what I was um, also, so lead generating could be um, social media, right? Posting ads, um, so, uh, technology wise, you know, through command and all those avenues, but that's lead generating. What I was wanting to emphasize, uh, leave you with this, this thought is we have to talk to people. We have to have conversations. 
That is one of the most important things that we can do. And a conversation can be a text, it can be an email, but nothing beats a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Okay, so I just wanted to leave you on with that. Okay, and now we're gonna be going to setting goals. Let's see, for those of you that, I don't think, um, not sure if you were able to download. There's links on the, there's links in the chat. Please email me if you're not able to generate that. Oh, I don't have that here. It's, it, it's on my desk. I'm not going to get up and go get it. So the 411 is the, what Keller Williams is recommending for us to set our goals. Does everybody use this currently? Or do they use, do you use something else to set your goals or are you even setting goals? That's the question, right? So what 411 represents is one main goal for the year. What is your one goal for the year? What is your goal for the month? And four represents the weeks. So our annual goal, does everybody happen to have an annual goal? Everybody, yes, no. It could be um, how much you want to net. It could be how many properties you want, how many transactions. Um, so we should have a goal. Yeah, we should have a goal. So if you don't have that, get get together with your team leader or your mentor and definitely set up your goal. So annual. So my annual goal is I want to have 24 transactions. So that means I've got to have two transactions, two closes a month. And we're all going to have different goals. And for those of you that are really new to KW, um, we have Everything and anything that you might need as far as training and paperwork and, um, uh, you know, the 411. And I, I, I'm not sure if Lauren put it in the chat, but if you need a copy, it's just a one sheet and it's nice. You can have one for every month. Uh, just let me know or, or ask your team leader or it's all on KW Connect. All these, all this, um, the manual, the trainings, all the paperwork, it's on KW Connect. Okay. All righty. So can we take a moment and for right now, just do your one annual goal. Let's just take a minute and think about what is your one goal for this year, the main goal. Everybody have it? Would a few people like to share? I've already shared you with mine. So I'd like to um, have 24 or more uh, closes this year. Five listings. Great. Anyone else want to share what is their goal? I said 12 listings. For Great. My Great. Do you have any right now, Valerie? No. Oh, did you have any in January or February? No. Okay. It's all right. It's been a dry year for me, like the last really tough year. So oh, I hear you. We're, we're all in the boat, same boat. And so now, though, what we've already talked about, right? It's like, oh, okay. I got to make my calls. I got to call my past clients or send them something. 
send them something of value. You know, we have to, we have to, um, and I know that's not this class, but for me, we've got to, to really meet our clients where they're at. And if you, if we think we had a hard year, what do you think that just a normal uh, homeowner has? I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going on? You know, oh gosh, the values have been going up, but if I don't sell now, it's going to crash. And you know, all their things that they're thinking, right? It, it might be as simple as, and this is for everybody, and please, anybody that has suggestions, please um, contribute your thoughts. It could just be, oh, oh, hi, Valerie, you know, I've just been thinking about you. How are you? How's the family? Okay. Oh, great. You know, that's good to hear. Um, you know, I'm just checking in with everybody because last year was quite um, challenging. And um, I thank God that I'm still able to help my clients. And I'm just wondering, in case you might have, <coughs> any, have any needs or do you need any help with anything? You know, just really sincere and simple. Simple conversation. Um, okay, who, who else would like to share their goal for this year, 2021? Don't be shy. Uh, <laughs> any, anybody have... Um, would like to share anybody else? I'll leave it at that. Anybody else like to share? Okay, it's all right. You don't have to share. Um, but think about it. Please set your goals because that's what we're, we're, we're going to be talking about now. And then the last um, section is going to be accountability. Like um, for me, I probably could use an accountability partner, but you know what's accountable? <laughs> My mortgage. My, uh, the pg &E, i I'm accountable to them. So I, I really don't need that that much, but um, anyway, uh, but we all in some way should have an accountability partner. Okay, so we talked about your yearly goal. So now we have to break that into your monthly goal. So if my goal or um, let's use Valerie. Valerie, your goal is 12 listings. Okay, so that's your annual. Right. So then, then we go to the month. Each month, what would be your goal? What is the goals to get you there, right? Right. And then, and then from there, we break it down to weekly. And for those of you that need that worksheet, um, again, please check in with your team leader or your mentor or, or email me. Oh, here it is. This is a worksheet. Can everybody see this okay? Is it too small? No, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So this is basically what we were talking about. And again, this is in your manual. These are examples. The big rocks. What are my big rocks? We already talked about that in extent. I wanted to take a lot of time with that because that's the core, I believe, in um, starting as focusing on listings. So each week, it's pretty much going to be the same. Um, I would say to to go on um, one of the week's goals is we got to hit set appointments. It to get listings, we have to set appointments. To set appointments, we have to talk to people. So the weekly goal, um, actually, oh, that's on my desk. Um, one of uh, my weekly goal was is Let's see, it was 20 contacts. Was it a week? I think I, yeah, 20 contacts a week or more. Um, and that means I'm gonna have to call, I think I had 40, at least 40 calls a day. Could be 30, um, but just because I reached my 20 contacts a, a week, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop. Oh, well, I can. Let's say I hit it by the second day of the week. Um, Laura is always our team leader at San Jose Gateway. Laura has always um, shared with us and encouraged us to um, beef up when where we can. Like 
these next months, spring and summer, that's usually historically the height of the market. So this is where most of owners are thinking about selling. So if we beef up on these months, maybe when we get into the October, November, where the listings historically go down, we will have already met our goal. So Valerie, with your goal of 12 listings, uh, if you can hit it by May, wouldn't that be great? Amazing. June, July even. Mm -hmm. So the more we can do at the beginning of the year. So anyway, that's what this section on the 411 is each week. And I like to keep things simple. We don't have to have a ton of tasks. It's basically our calls are reaching out and we have to set appointments. Okay. There was one thing I, in preparing for today that I really intrigued me that I, I, I read. This gentleman said not to focus on our goals. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. You know what he said to focus on? Our behaviors. And I thought, wow, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to go focus on, oh, gosh, I got to hit, uh, let's just say, two listings a month. What I'm going to focus on is, okay, today I'm going to make my calls. I'm going to... Um, when I can, when we can, um, well, let's not say now because we can't do it right now. We can't door knock right now. So, but what can we do? Uh, reach out to our past clients, reach out definitely to our sphere because it's not just them, it's everybody they know. I forget the number, but everybody knows at least 200 people, let's just say. I think it's more, but I'm gonna be conservative. So if I call Valerie and I just check in with her and, oh, Valerie, you know, um, by chance, is there any, maybe a neighbor or uh, somebody from church or uh, maybe a fam, uh, no, it won't be a fam, yeah, family member that, um, you, that might need some real estate, maybe either uh, real estate help, maybe either buying or selling or investing in real estate. Anybody perhaps you might know? And then give her some time to answer. So um, I just found that very interesting. So it's our behaviors and it's our behaviors that we are in control of. We're not, control, we're not in control of the market. Not really, you know, uh, we're not in control um, of uh, the, the interest rate. Um, let's see. The other thing is what can I do today to help me get closer to my goal? We already talked about that. What can I do tomorrow? So in our job, in our profession, in our business, we're probably gonna do the same things pretty much this day in, day out, right? We've gotta to talk to people. All right, anybody wanna to add to uh, the 411? Any questions, any insight? We're almost done, then we're just gonna talk about accountability. So we can take a few more minutes here on the goal setting. Oh, you know what? Um, there's one section here, sorry. Uh, that they talked about, oh, where is it? No, maybe we haven't gotten to it yet, hold on. Oh, this, oh, that's under the accountability, ne Never mind. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, and here's a worksheet. This is kind of a older version. This is, again, this was created in 2004. But it's, it's perfectly fine, but it's, it's rather um, on the basic side. So anybody have any insight about uh, you utilizing the 411? Anybody like to share? It's not exactly an insight. It's more of an issue. It seems that you, well, you said earlier 20 calls a day, or what did you say that you would need to make? I, I want to make 20 contacts. 20 contacts. So I think, um, so to me, making 20 calls in a day, it seems like a lot. So um, I think I probably, I'm somewhere around needing to figure out what I, um, what do my actions need to be to reach the goal? Like just, you know, I've made 
I, you know, I'm fine with the goals and I've done that before. And then it seems that uh, I stumble on the actual, the action steps. Ah, okay. So just throwing that out there. I don't know. Great. Mm -hmm. Good, good um, question or in, or what you're thinking about. Uh, so yeah. can anybody help Valerie on that note? So what I can share, Valerie, is that you're going to take time with your team leader. And he, you're Campbell, right? Yeah. You, he, uh, Rob will walk you through that. So if your goal is 12 listings, how about buyers? Are you, you want buyers too? God, I don't hear you. Are you muted? Sorry about that. Yes, I do want buyers, but um, I, I feel like, you know, those are just much easier. So, yeah. um, okay. I mean, not easy to get into contract right now, but as far as, you know, lead generation for buyers, you know, I, not, I am, I don't struggle with that as much. Yeah, I'm the same way. And especially you've been in the business for what, 16 years, you said? 15, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get those because you know um, our past clients are referring us, right? Right. Pretty, yeah. So for listings, let's just say you want twelve listings. That's your goal. So right. Right. what is it gonna take to get to twelve listings? Um, Rob will go through that with you, and that's your um, G G GPS. G oh my gosh. Um, sorry, I, I'm drawing a blank on uh, that calculation. Right. I, yeah. I think it's in the worksheet. So yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking but, about. I can't think so, of it. So to attain the 12 listings systematically, mm -hmm. you're going to do the math. Okay. And it's going to come down to the very bottom is how many people do you need to call each week? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, 20, um, that's, it depends on everybody's goal, but that's kind of average or Honestly, probably on the low side. <laughs> per day or per week? Per day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now I, I, and I said contacts. I, I might have to take, it might take me 30 or 40 or 50 phone calls to get to speak to 20 people. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, but good question. Anybody else can help Valerie with any other suggestion? But I find I find having all those calls per day it's not realistic because you know uh, you cannot be on the phone all day long. That takes a lot of time if if you're gonna be contacting people and having that conversation, which leads to talking about you know uh, finding a listing or if somebody knows to sell or buy. Those they take time to to make those uh, conversations. Yeah, and twenty calls a day. 20 contacts, that means that you are on the phone since morning to night. When do oh. you live? When do you eat? When do you do <laughs> other things? When, yeah. when do you? <laughs> yeah. You know what, Elsie? What I'd recommend is finding someone that does calls and that's their, that's their primary um, lead generating source and just watch them. Now, you don't have to pick 20. What if you do five contacts a day or even two? Yeah, well, that is more doable. But 20 for me, it's, it sounds like it's not realistic. Nobody can do that. I don't oh, think anybody gosh. can do that. You know what, Elsie? Some, some of these top, top people, they are making, mm, in one hour, they would make, I don't know, 30, 40 calls in one hour yeah you can do 30 40 calls when they're not answering the phone but to have the contact to talk to them to have the conversation that takes time it takes At time but it's no. gonna take 10 15 minutes per call to get to the point where you can Maybe. you know reveal your intention and you know check oh do you do you know of anybody selling buying you know i'm still um looking for you know, some, some work to do or whatever. Yeah. And you know what, Elsie, um, in time, you'll get stronger. We will all get stronger if we um, make these calls. And, and you, there's a script that starts by saying, um, hi, good morning, Elsie. This is Yvonne. How are you today? 
Um, you know, the purpose of my call today is I just have a, a couple of things I'd like to um, touch base with. It's, that's not the script, but it's, it's, hey, this is a business call. So there's scripts, Elsie, that can help you with that. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody's going to have their own. Um, you can start off at, it all depends on making sure we do whatever the most important thing is in the beginning of the day. And not only should we be lead generating, but Gary has preached this for years that um, if it's a challenging market, we need to double down. Meaning if we're used to only doing two hours of lead generating, we should do four. Hmm. And whatever you can do in that uh, allowed of time, um, we're gonna be successful. We're gonna see results. The um, couple of weeks ago, I think I was watching his life, um, Gary's life um, podcast. And I just loved how he really narrowed it down. You know what he said? Because people were talking about time blocking and, oh, it's confusing. You know, I can't time block every single hour of the day. And Gary said, it's simple in the AM, you lead generate in the PM, you work the business. We can't get any more simpler than that. So I just wanted to let you know about that. So, um, and that is from Gary Keller, who is the number one uh, agent and has been for all these years. Okay, so now let's go to accountability and we're gonna end on this. This is just, um, and I'm sure all of you have heard like of a accountability partner, which is good. And if you feel, if we feel that we do need an accountability partner to hold us accountable, right? Uh, we can, we can say, uh, it's very easy to say, oh, my goal is, it's very easy for me to say, oh, my goal is to contact 20 people, uh, make 20 contacts a day. Okay, now, um, and these are the, Elsie, can you see this, the SMART goals? Can you see it on the, or is it too small? SMART goals? Yeah, um, let's see, how do I make this bigger? Oh, I better not try. Can you, can you guys see this? Oh, can you see this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the goals and you were talking about, oh, thank you, Valerie. You, you're, you were talking about, oh gosh, that just seems kind of unrealistic. Well, then maybe for you to start, you wanna see this word realistic, okay? Yeah. Maybe for you, it might be five calls a day. But SMART talks about SMART goals. So be specific in the goal, have it uh, measurable, action oriented, realistic and time bound. <coughs> so all our goals should have these qualities included. Can you see, I'm gonna let you read that for a quick moment. Any questions on, on um, this information about setting goals? Any insight? Anybody wanna add? Okay, pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, we set our goals and they just have to have these characteristics included in our goal. All right, now going to um, the last part of the accountability. Okay. Um, what I'd like to go over are these two questions. So this can be, if you do need an accountability partner, please reach out, reach out to somebody. It doesn't have to be a, a colleague. It could be a friend and it could be as simple as, Hey, you know, um, Valerie, I'm going, can, uh, can we just check in every Monday morning for five minutes or every Monday morning, I'm going to text you 
and I'm going to give you the numbers of, um, of my contacts. How many hours I lead generated and how many co calls did I do and how many contacts did I, um, I, I was able to generate and how many listing appointments. Let's say four things. Okay, so I'd probably be more likely to do it if I know I have to send it to Valerie every Monday morning. Now, I might not have hit all my goals, but at least I'm working towards it. Um, because as that person said that I was listening to, um, if we focus on our behaviors, uh, we will achieve our goals. Not focus on the goal, but focus on the behavior, which is our actions pretty much. So what I liked about this page, it talked to, I thought these, these two bottom were great questions. Is there anything that might keep you from doing, oh, sorry, you have to read this one first. Based on how you did this week, what is your goal and what, what do you need to do now? And then these two question, is there anything that might keep you from doing that? If you needed training or support to do this, what might, what, what might it be? So Elsie, like for example, you were talking about, oh, that seems impossible. Well, what if you had the list ready to go for the week? I'm calling these people. Not that hard to sit down and, and two, in two hours, you're gonna make at least 20 calls. Or you, or you have the ability, let's put it that way. So it's also being organized. What, what training or support do you need? Do you need to talk to a title rep? Do you, like Donna mentioned, um, um, I don't remember what, which company it was. You know, um, for me, I'm starting in my database. I'm not, I'm not gonna go buy any phone numbers. I have enough in my database. And once I get through my whole database, then I start over again. So with all of you that are kind of newer in the business, you've got to build that database. And you might be surprised how many people you really do know. And every day, build, 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 and um, um, build your database and feed your database. Will we talk about ways to build at some session in the future? Uh, oh, how to build the database? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's going to be in well, prospecting. Now, again, this this is uh, listing focused, right? So, look, look, let me just see where are we on this exercise? Yeah, okay. So let's go back to the courses, uh, the classes. These are the these are the eight classes. Tomorrow is with Donna prospecting. Three, four is Renee, our coach. Then I think this is Chris delivering the listing consult. Um, and then Terry from the Campbell office is, is, is finishing up, I believe. So as far as um, adding to the database, Valerie, you mean meeting new people? Yeah. Well, do we wanna end on that? Do we, oh, first of all, before we do end on any other last questions, um, does anybody want an accountable partner? Does anybody wanna team up with someone? And, and it, I would suggest to keep it simple. Maybe something like I just mentioned, every, whatever day you pick, I'm gonna send you, and it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be a colleague. It could be um, your spouse. It could be maybe an, an adult child. It could be anybody, your team leader. It could be me, uh, it could be Elsie. <laughs> so anyway, you guys get my point, right? Uh, It's a good thing to have, otherwise they wouldn't emphasize it here in class mm -hmm. to be accountable. Because we'd be, um, it would just help us keep on task. 
right? If we had somebody that we would have to say, hey, yeah, last week I did, um, I hit, these are the things that I got accomplished. So what do you guys think? Do you think that you might want to have somebody that you're accountable to? Yes. Is that, was you Valerie said yes? Or yes. Oh, okay, great. So you're gonna think about who you'd like. I'll ask Rob. There you go. Any, anybody else think it's uh, that you'd like to connect with someone and be accountable? Think about it. Mm. Think about it. Just keep it in mind. And it could be uh, very simple. It doesn't have to be all those four things. It could be, um, it could be one thing. Uh, could be, hey, uh, maybe how many appointments did you set last week? You know, uh, it could be just simple one thing. It could be how many calls did you make? How many conversations did, how many connections did you make? Okay. Now, in closing, is there, let's see. Okay, yeah, so that's prospecting. Tomorrow with Donna is prospecting. And what I recommend is, again, if, if you need any of the material that you were not able to download in the chat, reach out to me or your team leader, or it's in, it's in KW Connect. So, any, any other last thoughts um, and or questions? I'm just looking through my notes to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Hey, can I, can I add something? Absolutely. Um, so yeah. when I was, you know, a couple months and I was still pretty much lost to like, where do I get the numbers? Who do I talk to? Yeah. I, I came across an agent named Ricky Caruth. He's a pretty good guy and like pretty good how he like does his business and I follow him and it's been helping me so far. So I recommend to look him up. Uh, who's that, Alex? Ricky Caruth. Is, is he a KW agent? He is not, but uh, everything he like uh, his coaching stuff is absolutely free. So what, that's also why I like him. Oh, so he's, he's real good. Now, can you spell the last? I'm sorry, I don't. I, I, I don't want to lose you guys, so I'm not going to touch anything. <laughs> can, can you spell it? I mean, can you put it in the chat and do you mind yeah. spelling it for me? I, let me look it up. I believe his last name is C A R O, I mean, R R U T H. I'm sorry, say it again. C, oh, there you go. C A R R U T H. Great. And first Hi. name is Ricky? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real awesome guy. I love how he runs this stuff. So is he an agent in California? Uh, Alabama. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And do you mind sharing just one thing you've learned from him that you really like? Um, and that you've implemented? It's pretty much like you guys always say, it's building that relationship. Even when it comes to cold calling, um, I don't really go shoot for the listing or, or buy an appointment. It's more like, hey, like, I'm just here to help. Like, is there anything I can do if they say no? Like, do they have an agent? You know, and that's when I kind of like say like, hey, I love to build a relationship with you over time. So when I, when I know when it comes. So that's like how that. he runs in. He makes a lot, a lot of money like that. So, so that's kind of, he's pretty I good. like that, Ricky. And I'm so glad that you um, shared. You know why? Because, well, this course, we're focusing on listings, mm -hmm. you know. But overall, that's a great um, that's a great philosophy or um, what to focus on. Um, and when you're making your calls, it's not necessarily listings, right? It's it's going to be um, and and you're doing cold calling. That's one of um, I think one of the I don't want to say hardest because I don't want to be negative. One of the um, mm, it, it's it's rough <laughs> rough one of the yeah, it, it is rough uh, you know when i first started i didn't start with kw i started at an independent brokerage and I, I loved it because i i learned a lot and you know what the broker gave me or gave us the new people he gave us a book 
of na phone numbers and names. And we called and I called and, you know, and we generated business. I wouldn't say it was fun. Uh, I would not put it in that category, but you know what it did? It generated business. Not only did it generate business, but I have to say one of my most rewarding clients and transactions came from the call. It's amazing, you know, we all, cause we kind of think of the negative, oh, people are gonna hang up on me and this, that, and the other, and that's true. But it's like, okay, well, they're not the ones that need you. Okay, we go to the next person. There's gonna be people that need us. And it's really amazing. Um, I, my, but before we go to that, Alex, thank you for sharing that. So can you tell us what um, have you done to implement what you've learned from Ricky? I pretty much cold caught an hour. Um, whatever I get in that hour is I live with. If I get zero emails or phone numbers, and that's totally fine. If I get three, four days, I mean, four emails like on a good day, um, I just keep going. Good job. Um, what uh, program are you using to, to get the contacts that you're calling? Reddix. So it's GeoLead. So you just look up a neighborhood and then it'll bring up the numbers that are on the do not call list, um, who are agents to exclude those from your list. Mm -hmm. So I use that and it's, it's been helping me. Reddix, yeah. Um, so there's many, many of those companies um, a couple years ago, uh, oh gosh, what was the name of that company? Uh, they come to our bold classes um, and promote themselves. Oh, I forget, but they're mainly expired. What is it? There's Land Voice. Land Voice, that's the one, thank you. Um, they're mainly expired in FISBOs. And I called a couple, I didn't get too far just because of some, uh, um, responsibilities at home, but I made conversations, you know, um, and again, when I very first started, we got that list and now I'm sure, uh, Heath, my broker, he got it from one of these companies that, you know, and we just called, there was a name, there was a phone number and we just called and we just said, hi, I'm Yvonne. I'm with, uh, One World Estates and, uh, we're just reaching out to our neighbors and our community and to see if you might need any real estate needs or do you have any questions? I mean, that took me five seconds to say. So it's amazing how some people will engage. Majority won't. That's why we have to double down and make more calls and so on and so on. So that's great, Alex, you keep that up. It's only a for any of us, if we're doing our 20%, it's only a matter of time. That's all it is. You, you will, we will um, see results and it's only a matter of time. Anyone else like to share what, um, anything else that they're doing for lead generating to, to um, um, as Valerie was, ask, Valerie was asking, how can we build our database? I just um, uh, got um, a new way to do it. it it's, uh, it's costly, but I, uh, I, I decided that it's worth trying. It's called Elevate. Mm. Um, so I, um, I tell them which areas I'm interested in and they kind of uh, try to find the leads and, and uh, you know, send them to me. And those are the people that I try to call and contact and see if there's anything that I can do for them. Because uh, for me, I, I try to call the people who need me rather than everybody and bothering 50 to get one who's gonna be appreciative. I, I feel bad because, um, uh, you know, my household is a type of household that we don't appreciate people calling us, you know, trying to sell us or trying to get us, you know, if they don't know us. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, for, for me, it's difficult to call people I don't know if they don't need me. But if they need me, 
I, I, or they have a need, you know, which I know already by, you know, having that um, uh, lead, uh, then, then I don't mind calling because then I have a service to, to, to give them. Right. So, um, I'm hoping that it's going to work. I don't know. I'm, I'm early on in the game, so I'll keep you posted with my results and if it's worth it. Are you doing the buyer and seller leads? I, I, I have to be a seller okay. uh, lead, okay. but uh, they, they do send, you know, yeah. all kind of info. You know, I have the Elevate Plus premium. Yeah, I so, attended one of their trainings or webinars or something like that. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I registered last week, but it takes okay. me a week to, to get things together. Right. So it just started yesterday. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm hoping that this yeah. is going to help. Yeah, sounds good. I'll be yeah. interested to see how that goes. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Thank you. Anyone else that how you've been generating to build your database? I actually did sign up with Land Voice just a couple of days ago. Oh. So um, they provide they provided some zip code availability for um, specific years of expireds. Um, I'm kind of scared to call <laughs> oh. recently expireds, especially. I think I would I would have to really. Um, so I'm hoping that just I'm not much. I admire the people that are able to cold call. Um, I, I, in the past, I farmed um, geographic farm with a partner door knocking and yeah. felt much more comfortable in person, yeah. but just they, calling, uh, you know, if I don't know them, I find it very challenging. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I'm kind of getting my feet wet with this or yeah. I haven't started calling yet. I just got the lists, but I, I want, looking at some of the scripts and things like that. So good, good start though. It's a good start. And yeah. uh, I'm going to make a couple of suggestions in closing. And let me just, this is, I just want to, so this is for tomorrow. Um, two things that came to mind. Elsie, you mentioned uh, it's a little pricey. When I first started, I tag teamed with um, a colleague. So we just shared everything. So uh, I'd like to recommend that or suggest that also with a lender or with um, maybe even an inspector, uh, one of your vendors. Uh, yeah, actually I have, a, I, I am uh, working with uh, Della Martinez and uh, she's very helpful. And uh, yeah, that's where I got the information about that because that property I got today as a lead is a rental and it's a multi um, uh, multi home kind of it's an apartment building and uh, the owner doesn't live there so I have two addresses I have uh, found out the owner lives in one place and the property is in another but the owner didn't have any uh, contact number he has his address where he lives in but I would like to talk to him because I think it's uh, a much but better reach. If, if he hears me talking, I can convince better. I can you know, meet with him if, if possible. Uh, so, so I'm trying to get a number to call him or email to send him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes that's... like for, for me, I, I look at people the way I, I behave. Normally, if I get a letter from somebody I don't know, I don't even open it. I just, it goes right, right to my, you know, recycle bin before I enter the house. So, so I don't want to send something that is not going to be opened. I want to make sure that my contact had reached the target. So even if it's a personal handwritten note, would you toss it? If it's, if it's somebody I don't know you would at still, all. Really? Uh, you know, if okay. it's, if it is, if it is normal post, uh, post uh, stamp, Mm -hmm. Yes, I will open it to check it out. But if it's uh, those um, stamps that are like uh, uh, bulk, or whatever. I, don't, I, I don't open it. Okay. Yeah. But what I was saying, Elsie, um, was 
as far as the cost, uh, especially for our newer agents, if uh, because everything just to get our license is a few thousand dollars, you know, and, yeah. and to generate every month we have expenses. Of course, we're our own business and and business expenses um, expected, but to help cushion it a little bit to partner up. So that was just my suggestion. I partnered mm -hmm. up. What we found was I was better reaching out like you, Valerie, and you, um, Elsie, and I know Art too, were, uh, like to be more one-on-one. -on -one. And so that was uh, where I excelled. And my partner, he was great with the phone. And not only that, he loved doing it. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Mm. I said, okay, you call <laughs> and I'll go meet them. And um, it was perfect. So good just, idea. Yeah, keep it in mind because there's some people that they don't like to go do the the gabbing. You know, they're not the social person. So um, it, it was great. That partnership worked great. Uh, and there was something else. Oh shoot, Valerie, I didn't want to interrupt um, Elsie. I'll, I'll think of it. There's something that you said that triggered. Um, Darn it, I, f I forget. Um, but anyway, anyone else have anything that um, that you can help the group by what, you, what you've been doing to generate um, new contacts in our database? Um, I have recently tried, um, this week I recently tried with texting because uh, I was emailing people, uh, you know, people, before, uh, potential sellers from wherever I know, yeah, you know, and 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 I was emailing them, but then I saw one ad that texting <clears throat> is in, emailing is out. I'm like, yeah, actually, that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so at least with text, you know, it's directly on their phone, and that way, I mean, at least the the chances are, I believe, the chances are a little bit higher if somebody, you know, open, open your text. Uh, if it's directly from my phone, yes, I'm doing it. I haven't hired any agency or anything. Sometimes I just like, you know, for half an hour, I straight up do it. Um, there's one generic text, which like a template, which I made and <laughs> I just copy paste that. And sometimes I, I do receive a response like after <clears throat> like, you know, <laughs> 50 texts that who are a hey uh who are you and what do you i mean how did you get your number you know things like that but uh i did receive like few responses those who are looking to buy and i'm like okay and uh, i just tried that because i have unlimited texting I, I believe all the phones now they have all the plans they have unlimited texting so oh yeah you know we could take an advantage of that and um yeah to add to our database yeah to add to our database if they respond then yeah you know we could I mean, yeah thank you art for sharing anyone else what they're doing um to generate more contacts and these are new contacts obviously the people we already have in our database uh, we already have them then it's our responsibility to continue to um, reach out. I love the, um, for some of you that might not have been at uh, family reunion, you're gonna still see this from Jason Abram, I'm sure in many of his coming, um, you know, trainings and such. It's not anymore that we only focus on our clients when they buy or sell. It's all throughout their, um, their life. You know, we help them here and we help them here, but in between, we're still keeping in touch. We're still reaching out. We're still sending them um, invitations, even though majority of them aren't gonna be able to come. But like, if we have a special speaker, um, we can invite them to one of our, uh, of our uh, offices events. It doesn't say that we can't invite our clients. If we have a special speaker, let's say on Prop 19 or any on a tax um, advisor, or um, first time home buyer seminar, that's a great way actually to generate um, reaching out because everybody's looking to connect. And so um, I'd recommend those things. I remember now Valerie, what I want to mention, and this is for all of you that are kind of used to um, the door knocking and the open house. I was like, the open house was my number one um, mm -hmm. right after my sphere. 
it was it is thank you it is my thank you it's my number one um uh, i loved because i love talking to people so i can't do that anymore right we can't do that sorry i, I needed my charger uh, we can't door uh, we can't open house anymore or, or or can we we can do virtual yeah has anybody done a virtual open house I haven't yet. I've heard. I've heard. Uh, talk to some other people who have done it successfully. But um, fun. It's fun. Let me know if you if you want to do one together. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you. You're welcome. And um, what about virtual coming soon? What about just? Uh, and when I mean virtual, that's just like Facebook Live. Art. We did it together on on the listing, and you know what was it? A couple of minutes. Oh, you know, I yeah. just, just want to show you the upcoming listing of our office. You don't have to say whose it is. You don't have to say it's our it's, team. Yeah. Here's one of our new new listings. And that's the truth, right? It's one of our new listings. It doesn't have to necessarily be our, our own. And um, you, you just go do a Facebook Live for two to three minutes. And then in between... Uh, you're showing, I like to walk up the street and just, oh, look at this great neighborhood. Look at this view. It's so, it's this, it's that. And then also just like to share, hey, the market right now, it's uh, it's a little challenging. So if you need any help with anything, let us know. It's still a great time. Um, I keep things on the positive note. I don't say, oh, this is crazy. I hear that all the time. People say, oh, it's a crazy market. R well, it's challenging. Um Oh, it's a seller's market. Well, is it really? I think the buyers have a huge advantage. Under 3% fixed for 30 years. It's amazing. You know? I have a question. I have a question here, Yvonne. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, fine. Before I forget, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> they, they, uh, is there a way, like, you know, in our MLS, there are coming soons? Yes. Which shows the listings of all the counties. I mean, the ones which we have access to, like the MLS, you know, they all the, there's a list of coming soon. So yes. these coming soons, they are belonging to like agents of like mul multiple brokers. I mean, multiple, also other than KW. Right. Uh, or our KW like try umbrella. Um, we could also like contact them and say like, could we just make like a, you know, any of these people, could we just make a virtual, a virtual, uh, you know, a virtual, uh, like a video. For just a virtual video for, may I, may I go ahead and, and promote your listing on my, yes. on my Facebook? Yes, could we like do that? Or, I mean, Absolutely. what do you think about that idea? Uh, I would just give the courtesy to the agent, whether it's a KW agent in our office or anybody, um, but call first and just ask permission. Hey, you know, I, I, I really like that area you're, you're listing. May I, would it be okay if I do a virtual uh, promotion on my Facebook Live? Because the reason why we want to say that, some uh, owners are very particular. Okay. And so we just want to be mindful of that and definitely respectful. So, um, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so what, what does that do? Well, do, is that in our 20% or is that in our 80%? Who, who says it's in the 20%? 20%. Going doing a virtual Facebook Live is 20%? No, creating the virtual live, Facebook Live is 20%. I, uh, I don't agree. No, it's lead generation though, right? Yeah. Do you it's a, it, it also shows that we are active realtor, you know, well, and we are in the market and we are uh, engaging. I mean, if, online, I mean, I, I, you never know like how, like who would engage when, you know, and like a video, somebody would definitely watch a video yeah, then reading. I, I would say 50-50 then. Um, it is lead generating. Uh, but is that action, what was that question that the guy said, um, is, is what I'm doing going to be bringing me closer to my goal? Like, is that the, the main 20%? It could be, 
But the thing is, uh, on Facebook Live, we can't communicate. They could only message us. So I guess it's, like I said, I, I rephrase my no. I, I'm gonna say it's 50-50 because they can't, we can't communicate, but all the times that I've done my virtuals, it's, um, I don't get too much engagement, but what I do get is I post it on my, uh, uh, on my page and people see when they go on my page, it's like, oh, oh, Yvonne did this. Oh, Yvonne's, you know, uh, still engaged in real estate. So it basically promotes us, but um, so, okay. We'll give you 50% on that, <laughs> on that 80%, it. <laughs> 80 and 20%, it's, 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 it'll, it fits in each category. Um, mm. So, um, I appreciate everybody. I said about an hour and a half, which, but we're just kind of chatting now. This isn't really part of the class. We finished the class. And oh, and I have a last question. I'm sorry, it just came up in my mind. Uh, uh, you know how people post uh, next to the trees, like lost dog found, or you know, like lost pet or found a new pet. Oh. Could we post that? near the trees like oh there's a listing which is you know in our proximity or in the nearness mm. that they, brings they, back down the value i think that's not the proper way to do uh, uh, a good introduction to your business this is like i mean i'm not in value of that is not uh the appropriate way to do it I why think. why do you say that because it's 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 very like um, I don't know it's like writing uh, your notes on an old newspaper. Um, no, it's not a newspaper. Uh, so you take a print out on a, a nice notebook, you know. Well, I mean, you would take a uh, you could make that enhance that in a nice printout and you know make it no, colorful. <laughs> I hear what, I hear what you're saying, Art. The only thing that I would add is that we're not supposed to be get leaving any paper, any type of printed material anywhere for, for now. Okay, yeah, okay. So I would advise against it. The only thing maybe, maybe is, and I've done this numerous times with listings, um, but technically it's kind of the same thing, but even that I, I'm gonna kind of phase back, but I'm, let me finish what I was gonna say is I go to the local businesses and mm -hmm. I, put it, I put it like in their break room or sometimes, you know, like in coffee shops, they have uh, their, their bulletin board. Yeah. But, but right now we're not supposed to do that. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's basically like people who are walking, you know, people who are giving walks to the dogs or. No, I hear you. People, I like they, they see like the more eyes would see. It's kind of like a publicity, of course, like it's not famous, but. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's definitely creative. <laughs> yeah, I, I would um, I, I would just be careful. Yes, yes. I think I have to like I would ask Mike. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I, it just thought came in my mind, but yeah. I think there is definitely some legal angle uh, attached to it. I, yeah. I would say, knowing Mike, I would say that he'll he'll say no because right now we're not supposed to be uh, leaving any type of um, material. Right. Okay. Because because what if somebody grabs it, and mm -hmm. then God forbid they get sick. Right. Then it becomes like our liability. Uh, I'm gonna advise against that for now. Yes. Because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just but just in general. Um, so uh, just in closing, for some of us that are used to doing the door knocking and the um, open house can do it right now so we have to we have to be creative we have to be open-minded mm -hmm. and try new things and you know we're not going to grow unless uh keeping in our comfort zone when i coach volleyball i always wanted to play against teams that were um, much stronger than us because if we played teams at our same level or lower, I mean, we didn't learn. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you uh, and me because <laughs> uh, I'm not into calling either that much, especially cold calling, uh, which right now I don't have to, I have enough people to call. I, it's, they're all warm calls. But the thing is 
making the calls because I'm not used to that. Uh, but now that I have some more time to my in my schedule, um, uh, that's my that is my goal. That's my uh, what I'm focusing on is um, the calls because that we can do safely, right? We can do that safely. We're we're not uh, jeopardizing our health. We're not jeopardizing our clients. Our, our um, the people that we're calling. We're not je jeopardizing their health. And um, and I know out of let's say Valerie, you still on? You might be on a call or something. Uh, another good goal to have everybody is um, how many people do you want in your database? Um, I put a thousand and that doesn't mean the more you have, the better it is, because I really don't believe that. I believe uh, the quality is, is also important, but it could be a goal to add maybe 10 people a month. That's super easy to do. If it's, if it's your, if it's on your goal, that's super easy to do. Uh, how would we do that? Well, if, if those of you have to, if any of you, I don't know if too many people have taken bold, but bold, uh, <laughs> they had us go through the yellow pages. There are yellow pages actually. I, I um, every time I get one, I throw it away, but uh, there are yellow pages. There is an app now for yellow pages. I, I'm sure everything is, uh, <laughs> you know, what do you call it? Uh, but it's, I, I, I mean- At our fingertips. They, they just tell you the name of, I'm not sure about the name of the homeowners. I, I don't think so. It's, it's endless. It's endless. We are so blessed um, with, with everything that we have. It's, it's endless. It's just a matter of setting your goal and um, figuring out what behavior do we need to do every day to, to help us reach our goal. So I'd like to thank all of you that stuck it out until, even though I said, uh, you know, which we were pretty much done with our course uh, hour and a half ago. And um, there's a couple, I'm sorry, I don't see the names. I see the gentleman's picture. Um, he has a white shirt and a jacket. And I know everybody else had to go. Um, so tomorrow, prospecting, that's gonna, if, uh, hopefully y'all make it. Um, I'm gonna do my best also. And these are being recorded. Um, uh, these are being recorded if you ever want to, if you miss it, uh, ask your team leader uh, how, to, how to, to get back to these courses. There are many, many, many that have been recorded. Uh, all, uh, I don't know about all our classes, but quite a few. Okay. All righty. So thank you. Thank have, you. A, have a great day and um, uh, let's go work on our behaviors. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank Another you. word for that is habits, right? Let's build our, our good habits. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All righty. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.